Hi guys, so Shopify has come out with some new themes for uh, Online Store 2.0. So I wanted to create new tutorials for how to create hover drop down menus in each of these themes. I already have one for Dawn, um, but the rest of these, uh, they, while they use a pretty similar process, um, I'm just going to go ahead and create a video for each of them, uh, just so it's easier for you guys to get that hover drop down menu working. So at the end of this tutorial, um, your uh, basically your site header should look like um, this. So you can see that instead of having to click on these individually, I can just hover over them and um, the same thing for the sub drop downs as well. I've uh, just added a craft hover tutorial. Uh, this is basically just a blank craft theme um, that I'm going to publish right now. And we can see the default behavior now. If I go ahead and refresh my site, um, you can see that I can't hover over these. I'm going to have to click them to get to, to drop down, which um, depending on, you know, the theme of your site and whatnot, it can be kind of annoying. So to do this, the first thing that I want you guys to do is go ahead and download your theme file. Um, I'm just working on a test site, so it doesn't really matter that much if I mess up. But if you guys mess up, you always want to have a, a theme file downloaded that you can back up to and sort of, you know, retry or, you know, but just make sure that your entire site isn't screwed up. If you are uh, doing this and you have a live version of your site, um, you can go ahead and duplicate the theme and this will create a copy and you can actually edit the code in this one and keep your live site active. Um, that way, like visitors during the time that you're coding this and whatnot, they aren't gonna see all the, the um, different save states that we're gonna do and whatnot. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and work on the live theme. The only other thing to think about is if you're using one of these, um, these, you're going to have to hit this preview button anytime you want to look at changes. Um, so just keep that in mind. So anyway, so I'm just going to use my live site. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click edit code and the file we're primarily going to be working in is header.liquid. So go ahead and open header.liquid. Now, Assuming you haven't made tons of changes to your header.liquid, it should look pretty similar to mine. Um, so we want to navigate all the way down to right before this schema tag here. And anytime I say something like this in this tutorial, you can find these things by pressing Control or Command F and then just searching for whatever. So um, for instance, schema, you know, there's a few different schemas on this page, but this is the, the only schema tag. Um, so we want to just go right before that. And the first thing you guys are going to do is you want to go ahead and check the um, the pinned comment on this video where I've included a code snippet. So go ahead and copy and paste that code snippet in. Um, I've already coded up all this stuff previously. Um, we're just going to go ahead and save this. And if we look at this code snippet, basically what this does is um, it, it's going to grab the header of our site and get all the detail elements out of those. And so if you go ahead and look at our site, you know, we have a header here and each of these items is one of these details items. Um, and it, for each of those items, what we're going to do is on a mouse over, it's going to set the open attribute for that item to be true. And for the item below it, that's a summary item. It's going to set the area expanded equal to true. Um, and then conversely, you know, when we mouse out, obviously it's going to remove the open attribute and it's going to set this area expanded to be false. So, um, yeah, so once we've saved that, we actually are like pretty much there as far as the hover dropdown goes, right? Um, we can mouse over these and they drop down and whatnot. Uh, now there's two more parts to this video. Um, the second part we're going to, we're going to cover how you can basically, make this a toggleable feature um, that you're probably used to like doing in your uh, Shopify customizer where, for instance, with your header, uh, right now it's not a sticky header. If I click this button, we can enable the sticky header and then uh, when we scroll up, this happens, right? Um, but if it's unchecked, that doesn't happen. We're gonna have an enable dropdown header here. That's the second part of this video. And then using that, um, we're going to also make it so to expand the functionality of this menu, uh, we're going to make it so you can actually click on these uh, main items. Uh, now that now that we have this hover, we don't really need the click function to be bound to opening and closing them. Okay, so to do this, what we want to do is um, 
go to the second code snippet and copy the first line of the second code snippet, this if section .settings hover, And you want to go ahead and go to um, right before this script tag here. Um, and we're going to paste that there. And then just go ahead and copy that or copy the second line of the the, um, the, the code snippet. And just make sure this says end if section .settings hover. And so this is essentially, it's a liquid tag and it's only going to render what's in between it if this value is true. And it's only going to evaluate to true if this exists and is set to true. So um, we need to create this variable, this section.settings.hover. And so we're just going to put it right next to this enable sticky header. And this is going to go ahead and be the third code snippet. So we want this right here. Um, and uh, let me make sure that I add a comma to the end of this for you guys. Um, so we, we copy paste that and, um, we're going to go ahead and put it that right here. Uh, it's going to format it super weird. Um, that's okay. Uh, we can just format it better with spacing. And once we do that, um, let me just make sure. Once we do that, we're going to save. Um, and so essentially what this is doing is it's creating a, uh, a, uh, in the schema, it's creating a variable that has the ID of hover. It's going to be a checkbox in the customizer. And it has this label, sections.header.settings.hover.label. So that's just going to tell our schema file like where this is and whatnot. And uh, so once we've created that, uh, we, we go ahead and save that. And once I refresh here, you're going to see it's going to sort of give us an error. So right now, it has this missing translation thing here. And we obviously don't want that. Uh, so how we fix that is we need to go to our site's schema file. Uh, schema locale file. So we go down to this locales folder here and make sure you get rid of header.liquid here so it'll actually show you the files. Um, and here we have uh, our English default schema.json. So whatever whatever language you're using or if you're you know switching between languages or whatever, like you want to be in whatever files those are, right? Or in whatever file that is. So for me, that's this English default dot, uh, dot schema dot JSON. For like Spanish, it's going to be ES dot schema dot JSON. German will be DE dot schema dot JSON. Um, yeah. So then what we're going to do is we want to find, let's just find this sticky uh, header. Yeah. So once we're here, we want to go ahead and copy this next um, code snippet, which is probably going to format weird, but we can fix it. Um, so, and you don't actually want this comment here. So we'll get rid of that. And then let's just make sure that this kind of formats a little bit better. So put this on the next line. And um, this is actually part of the same line. Uh, and so we actually just want this to say enable hover on menu items. And um, then we want to close this, I think. And um, then put a comma here. And don't worry, this will all be, uh, let's see, invalid JSON token. Um, so this actually is not supposed to be here. So this will, when, uh, when I have these snippets for you guys to copy, they'll, they'll be okay. Um, so you won't really have to do that much um, formatting or whatever. But uh, just make sure that basically, like, one of the rules with JSON is, like, you can only... Basically, it's like a list of objects. You always want a comma when there's another item left, but when there's no last, or but when it's the last item, you don't want a comma. So you can see this enable sticky header. There's a comma here. Hover has a comma here. This margin bottom doesn't have a comma here, right? Same thing for these in here, right? This label, um, you know, this one has a comma, but this info does not have a comma. So once we've saved that, we can go ahead and refresh this. And you should see now, that this will no longer be missing translation. It'll have enable hover on uh, menu items. And when we click that, uh, and we um, we want to save the site after we click that, and we can refresh, um, you'll see that now we ha it hovers. There's a hover dropdown. And when um, we don't have this checked, you'll see we have to click these. So, um, the other thing to note about these is that, um, and I've sort of demonstrated it with these three different menus, is with this type of dropdown, 
it's only going to work when uh, with a hover when the drop down is in the last item or when there's enough space in the remaining items where the mouse isn't leaving the the um, the unordered list item uh, when you when you uh, mouse down uh, past whatever, right? So this menu drop down three isn't going to work because we have two items here. And when I mouse out of this, we the item one is smaller than the two items, so it goes all the way up, and this entire box shrinks to this amount, but my mouse is below it. So just keep that in mind um, when you're uh, placing like where these are in the navigation pane. And to do that, just keep in mind that that's an online store navigation, and then it's going to be default. The default is going to be in the main menu. So that's the second part of the video covered. So the third part of the video is now that we have these as a hover drop down and we're able to toggle it and whatnot, and we have this nice variable that tells us when it's when it's on and when it's off. Uh, we can actually make it so that um, when it's set off, right, it's still going to be click to open and close these. But when it's set on, we can make it so that um, we can make it so that this will actually navigate to whatever this this menu item is linked to. So right now. Um, I believe it's linked to our refund policy, right? And this one's linked to our search, our site search. So to do that, we want to go back to our header.liquid file. In here, we basically want to find um, this item, this span here is primarily what we're interested in. And so if we have this header menu item, um, that's the class that this thing is. So we can search for that. And make sure that you're at the right one, because a lot of times with Shopify themes, there's two different headers for like one on mobile and one uh, for desktop. And we have to make sure that we're in the right one. So if we go to this span here and we go to the closing um, bracket here and we type test, then it should give us test and then whatever uh, the link title was before. So when we do that, you'll see that all of these are prefaced with test. So we know we're in the right place now. So once you're in the right place, what I want you to do is um, we're basically going to take the next code snippet, um, which is this here, this entire thing here. And we're going to copy paste that in between um, this summary tag. So wherever this is. And it's going to be formatted super weird as Shopify loves to do um, but once we've formatted it properly and the formatting is really optional but it's it's good to keep your site like your site's code looking decent otherwise it turns into spaghetti code um, once we've done that you'll see that when I click this it takes us to the refund policy when I click this it takes us to our site search um, but I can still hover over these and they still work um, so now what we want to be doing is we want to do the exact same thing but for these submenu drop downs and don't worry about a lot of these things being underlined like you can see this is actually linked out to the refund policy that's why it's underlined um and if i click on this like i have a ton of items that are um or if i click on this here i have a ton of items that are actually linked out to search that's why they're all being underlined we're going to go ahead and copy paste the next code snippet and we want to do that um in here so it's going to be i'm pretty sure this is the one it's this details header sub menu um, once again just to like if you want to make sure you can type this test here uh, before the child link title and refresh the site and you'll see that now i have every sub drop down is prefaced with test and so that's that's all working properly so once we've verified that that's the right area we're going to paste copy paste that um, code snippet and this is going to be the last code snippet. And I'm going to go ahead and tab this over. And you'll see now um, when we refresh the site, I can click these sub drop downs. And this one actually is linked to search. Uh, but like this one, for instance, is linked to subscription policy, uh, which is like just pretty blank right now. But you can see that I can actually click these now. And so that is should be everything. So if you have any uh, questions or if any of this tutorial didn't work for you or whatever, let me know in the comments and I'll try to update the code snippets um, if anyone finds any bugs or anything. Um, but other than that, uh, I'm going to do, as I mentioned previously, 
uh, if if you don't have a craft theme and you have one of these other themes, uh, you know, within the next few days, I'm going to be uploading tutorials for all these because they're they're fairly similar. But um, I just want to upload them for each, so it's just easier for people to find and, and easier for people to follow along. So um, yeah. So other than that, uh, you know, if this video helped you, leave a like, comment. It helps other people find it, and you know, subscribe for more videos about Shopify coding and how you can learn it and and uh, how you can you know some some cool features you can implement on your site to make them a little bit. Uh, more, you know, functional or, or feature complete or whatever. Um, and other than that, I'll see you in the next video, guys.